It's in one, two, three. Can you all hear me? Perfect. <laughs> so I've been told by the organizers that I have everything I need here to give a talk, and they are right. Has anyone seen these contraptions in Spain so far? Because making a cider in this country is rather complicated. Um, <laughs> welcome everybody to my talk. Uh, my name is Phil Sturgeon and I'm giving a talk about API pain points. Um, this is me in my little New York home on my roof. Uh, you may or may not know me from uh, Pyro CMS, which I apologize was a code igniter uh, device. And uh, you may or may not hate me for that, but I've been making APIs for a really long time um, and I've been doing all sorts of crazy things. This is a random compilation of all the random stuff I've done. Um, I've done uh, APIs that are, this one in the corner here was a, uh, a, a London uh, bus time app. This microphone is floating around on my ear. This is not okay. Um, I've done a, a random bus time app. Uh, I've done um, like an API for car dealerships. If you were running a car dealership, then you would use our system to help you find all of the random used cars in all of America. Uh, I've done Pyro, uh, APIs for Pyro CMS. I did one for uh, Pancake App, which was a uh, an invoicing application. I've done them for Compare Press, which again was a WordPress. I keep working with the worst systems in the world, but um, it was a uh, it was an add-on for WordPress. And basically, if you wrote an article about televisions, then you could like run a little thing on the side that would help you sell them televisions, and then you'd make some money. Apparently. I don't know. Uh, but recently I've been working for a company that is now completely bankrupt, which is hilarious. It wasn't bankrupt when I wrote this talk. Um, it was called uh, Capture, and I was walking around one day and I saw one of these in a shop and it made me laugh so hard. This is a blurry, awful, terrible image and I wish I had a better phone when I took it, but that, that right there is Chuck Norris kicking a polar bear in Texas. Firstly, why the fuck is that polar bear in Texas? No one knows these answers. No one knows these answers. Uh, <laughs> But I was so excited. I had no idea that this existed, and I realized that either our designer was drunk or bored when they did them. But I walked into a random shop in New York, had no idea that they were a capture venue, and I saw that, and I was so excited. Um, while I work for Capture, I flip more tables than I've ever flipped in my entire fucking life, and I apologize for swearing. That's not okay. Um, the reason that I was uh, so annoyed, um, and the reason I flipped so many tables is because... Um, I've been bought from a world uh, where I learned how to program and everything looked like this. How many of your architectures genuinely look like this? You've got, you got your post-nuke. No one uses post-nuke anymore, but put your hand up if you used to use post-nuke. We've got like three. Yes, Larry, you use post-nuke. We are brothers at arms in this. It was... Sorry? <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Mm. It was not amazing. Um, <laughs> but the way the architectures looked was this. It was everything in your CMS and then like a random MySQL database on the side and then woo, we made a website. Um, and that's this is, it's really not how that shit's going to work. Um, now like a random scribble I did for the, the next version of Capture <laughs> that we never made because they went completely bankrupt and fired me was that um, it was half of this. It was uh, like you've got your API in the middle and then you've got some random database and Postgres is cool, right? And then you've got Redis over here and you've got some dashboard, which is probably Angular or Ember. You can fight that out yourselves. You've got... Um, You've got like random stuff talking to Twitter and Facebook, which has no arrows to it because I forgot. And then you have um, like Instagram stuff and there's all these different APIs and there's callback APIs and there's all this stuff happening. And your architecture is crazy. These days, any architecture you make, any website worth having is just mental. And it's not, it's not post-nuke, funnily enough. Um, so I'm talking about APIs and it's pretty much only REST. Um, REST isn't like an A, B decision where you're talking about like, oh, I, I like Python or I like PHP or I like tabs versus spaces. Like REST is just how you make a website. REST is just how you make an API. You don't, <laughs> please don't soap. I mean, if you want to hire me and you have a soap website, I'll just headbutt you and walk away. <laughs> um, 
the very first step of this is nothing to do with APIs, um, but the very first part is just so important to making one. If you're making an API from scratch, please, for the love of the flying spaghetti monster, please just make uh, seed your database. Um, we've already had a really good talk about seeding your database with Kate PHP. All of that stuff applies. Faker, great. Um, I'll cut that slide short because Faker, just use Faker. Um, also, Factory Muffin is a great app, um, which we've pu which we've put on the PHP League, and you should definitely use Factory Muffin if you want to Google that. But um, skipping on, uh, endpoint theory is the hardest part of making an API. Like the very first part of making an API is working out what to name stuff. It's um, like with making a World of Warcraft account, the hardest part is naming your character, right? Because once you've named that stuff, you've got that for a really long time. You can't just change your name. Just like naming a kid. Like the reason I'll never have a kid is I won't know what I'll call it. Because if I call it something shit, I'll regret that f for a long time. Um, <laughs> so endpoint theory is really hard. Uh, the first difficulty with naming stuff is uh, plural versus singular, right? So a lot of people say, well, if I want to get users, that should be the user's endpoint. If I want to get a single user, that should be user whatever. And that kind of makes a lot of sense to me. That That is an API designer that is a straight up PHP developer because we are well used to having a get all users, get user, pass in an argument, 32, and then that's that's the function. But we're not we're not talking like PHP functions and models here. We're talking APIs. So what what happens is people people do these little functions. They're like users, user. That makes perfect sense. And then there are words in the English language that will kick you right in the asshole, like opportunities. Um, so that word sucks. And then you have it's not just whack an S on it. And people that don't speak English are going to try whacking an S on the end of opportunity, and then it's just not going to work. So. There are a lot of really awful words. I mean, things like this as well completely screw fo folks over that have no idea how to pluralize that if they don't speak English. So how about you just don't use, don't use plurals and you just, you just make everything a plural straight away. So you've got, you've got places, places 12, and then you can use sub endpoints that are places 12 check-ins. Everything's a plural. Everything's got a number on the end. Um, and you can just keep on, keep on doing sub endpoints. So this site is lovely. Thank you very much, James. Um, <laughs> does anyone understand what this slide means while I take a sip? So something that Code and I are always did, and I have literally no idea what Cake did because I've never used it. Hello. Um, something that Code and I always did was that it really enforced the idea that every single argument you send in should be like this. Every parameter, every... <laughs> Until I made Coding Lighter support get strings, it legitimately binned get strings um, for about six years, um, <laughs> which was hilarious and also not hilarious. Um, the way that a lot of people in, coding, in the Coding Lighter world um, send in their attributes is by um, parameter slashing the URI segment every single parameter they want to send in, and you get these you get these strings that are like this, and that's completely insane. Like all you're saying is I want all of the users, and they have to be active. There's no reason that should be an endpoint, and people do that because it's more SEO is better. And literally, Google isn't trying to call, crawl your APIs. I have no idea why people try and make their API SEO compatible. It doesn't matter in the slightest. Um, so what you want to do is that, like literally, if you want to send parameters, if you want to send uh, like query values, maybe you use the query string. That's why it's in the HTTP spec. So you should just maybe do that. Another thing that's really internet bad is using auto increment strings. Um, put your hand up if you like to expose your IDs that are auto increments. Anyone? You all do it. You all do it. <laughs> Don't lie to me. Um, <coughs> so this is one of the first things people do. And it's, this, it's not just a PHP problem. Like People do it in the Ruby community as well. But at least in the Ruby community, when they do it, they know that it's bad. In the PHP community, everyone does it. And no one knows that it's bad, <laughs> which is kind of a shambles. Um, <coughs> people do this. And what they do is they make a website. And they've got all this cool data. And it's all got an auto increment because everyone uses an auto increment. That's just what people do. And um, it means that when people, if you have an API especially, it means people can just add one 
add one, add one, add one, add one, and save your entire database. Just save the whole damn thing. I've had friends literally go bankrupt because they did this. And what happened was there was a company called, I think I can name them because they don't exist anymore. It was a company called Artspotter and they had this really awesome app and it was basically, um, you'd walk around and you'd see a random piece of awesome graffiti or a random bit of art or someone put a cow there and there was like random, or, oh, there's a guy on a piano that's from the government and people would take photographs of this random art and then tag it because they were art spotters. Um, and they they made this whole database of all this crazy unknown art in the whole in the whole UK, and uh, and they made a really awesome database of all this really interesting data. They had like six thousand pieces of completely unknown art from people like Banksy and all this random stuff. Um, and they made an API that was auto increment, and then some douche came along and just saved their whole database, and then made a better app. <laughs> they were like. Thanks, guys. That was a great two years worth of your work. But lol, control save. Um, <laughs> and I can laugh because I think one of them has a job now. I think the other guy is homeless. But um, <laughs> it just just don't just don't do this. It's just the worst idea you can have. Um, like it's really easy to not do that as well. Um, if you have a massive application and you're exposing your uh, your your ID numbers, then we'll it, it stop that tomorrow. But um, what you can do is that you can you can just uh, obfuscate them, and I said that correctly, which is amazing. Um, and what you do is that you, uh, my friend Zach it's Miller, you make a little ID like this. Uh, you in instantiate. I said that correctly too. I'm nailing this shit. Um, you instantiate the class with a random seed. That's a random seed right here. Just put in a just apply face to keyboard and roll. Make a little seed. Um, and then what you do is you say, <laughs> and then what you do is you say, all right, I've got an ID number of five, so five is now E, right? And the longer the number, the bigger that letter is going to be. So if you have five thousand, then you've got E five seven one two, and it's a hexadecimal code. Um, and then basically you put that in your URL, and then you get that back, and you say, all right, I've got I've got an E here. What is an E? And it says, oh, an E is a five. So you can really easily obfuscate, did it again. You can really easily obfuscate your ID numbers just, just using that. So simple to, do, to use. And that's on Composer, and I think it's got at least one unit test, so you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed off like some letters here. I mean, that's not how PHP works, but... Um, <laughs> this this is another good system. If you can, uh, the last slide was all about if you've got this massive system and your ORM is like forcing you to use auto increment IDs or you have them and you can't get rid of them, you have to use Zach's approach, which is obfuscate the auto IDs that exist. The other approach is to just not use auto incrementing IDs. Like I feel like in the PHP community we have this, such this really like hard, just in completely. Can't think of the word. I'm not naming it anymore. Um, just like built-in requirement to always use auto increment IDs all the time, and you don't need to use them. You can just you can just use other random fucking IDs. You can just use that. Put that in your database, and that's that's the ID now, right? Just make a random unique thing, and then that's what you've got. Ah, oh, this is the most boring slide of my talk. Please, guys, can you just work through this with me? Um, yeah. So if you need to get a whole bunch of users, then you use get. If you need to use one specific user, then you get that one. If you need to update one, then you put it, because you use put if you know the ID and you're giving the entire answer. So if you're updating something and you have the entire body of that user to update, then you use a put. Um, if you aren't trying to update the whole thing at one time, use a patch. So if you're just trying to update the username or trying to update the bio, then use a patch. Otherwise, you have like, if you imagine you have like a, a, a if you if you're Twitter and you have the uh, Twitter app on your laptop and you have Twitter on your iPhone and you try changing your bio on on your phone and then you change your picture on on the the laptop, like uploading the new picture shouldn't undo the the bio that you just had, right? You should be able to update one thing at a time without screwing over other stuff. Uh, creating a brand new thing should be post, and you do that to a, to a collection. So you're like, here's a new thing to add to this whole 
situation. Uh, deleting stuff, funnily enough, should be delete. Oh, Christ. Deleting stuff, funnily enough, should be delete. Um, putting, <sighs> uploading, uh, put can be used for more than just updating stuff. It can be used for creating and like, um, it's meant to be item potent. Yeah, I did it. Um, it's meant to be item potent because uh, if you know the URL and you should be able to provide the whole answer without any, um, without any weird side effects. So, for example, if I have a user slash Dave, then I should be able to, I should know that slash image is an endpoint because I'm, I, I know that that's a thing. Um, so I should be able to say, here's a photograph of him in Spain. Here's a photograph of him drunk in Texas. And each time I do those images, that should be the complete answer. It's not meant to add images to a collection. It's meant to be, oh, here's, here's his image now. This is his image now. And if it corrupts halfway through, it doesn't really matter because I can keep on throwing images at that endpoint and it will always be idempotent. Um, if you want to have multiple images, then you would, instead of using image, you would use images and you'd post them to that endpoint because, again, post is used for collections. So in the same way that it's used for, for users here, it's used for uh, sub-collections, which is here are more images. So here's another photograph of Phil. Here's another photograph of Phil. Um, and, yeah, if you want to get a sub-endpoint, then you can get a sub-endpoint. <laughs> have a little read on that one. <laughs> Just gonna have a little, a little. Apparently, I've got to get through this bottle while I'm giving my talk. So, oh Jesus! Sorry for anyone that's religious. I've blasphemed twice, and that's not okay. So I've been telling people that um, my favourite way to make a cider even better is that you put tequila in it, and no one believes me. So afterwards, if anyone wants to try this, you are more than welcome. I'm also sorry. Well, sorry for anyone that doesn't drink. I'm not trying to like make drinking seem okay. It's just something I do. <laughs> sorry, I woke up half an hour ago. I'm ready for this. Um, so, <laughs> so, Jamie Hannaford works for Rackspace. So this isn't just like a random guy that's an idiot that doesn't know how shit works. This guy like helped me get my American visa, which is now irrelevant. But um, he, uh, <laughs> that's like a personal joke for like three people. I'm sorry. Um, Jamie Hannaford works for for Rackspace. Uh, kind of a big company, whether you like them or not. And um, they, they had Google. I said that Google doesn't really crawl your API. It kind of does sometimes if you don't put the right headers in there. So that was a bit of a lie, and I'm sorry. But um, they had uh, delete actions on a get verb, which is literally the worst thing you can do in the world, apart from punch people. Um, and it was a really bad idea. Um, yeah, so Google started crawling through their API, and it was just going like, oh, I wonder, I wonder what's over here, delete, I wonder what's over here, delete, 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 delete. Just, just wipe their entire database. Uh, <laughs> don't be a Jamie Hannaford. Yeah, that does sound like a bad day. Um, and <laughs> whoops. Um, pick the right format, even more relevant now that I'm in Europe, and I can't charge my laptop because I got the wrong stuff. Um, it's <laughs> picking a format is fairly important. Uh, Ah, form payloads are the worst thing in the world. Everyone starts an API, and this is exclusive to PHP developers. Y'all the problem. You guys. Um, people do this stuff, and they're like, okay, I need an API. I need some data. How do I access data? Oh, the post variable. Wonderful. Um, and they submit their shit through these awful, complicated strings. Who wants to read that and tell me what it does? Anyone, take a guess. What does this, what does this string do? What are, we, what are we doing here? Yeah, all right, the check-in keywords, I guess, gives it away, but uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, and the way that it works is like, oh, check-in, okay, here's a message, and then like, oh, I'm with, I'm, I'm with friends in a ray, and like, I'm with friend two, I'm with friend three, I'm with friend four, and I'm with friend five. And it's just the worst. Um, this whole syntax of, <sighs> I can't look at that screen. So what a lot of people do is that they go, okay, well, I still need to post data. I still need to access my post data. So I, uh, but um, the post data format sucks. So how about I post some JSON? And you get <laughs> idiots doing this. And it's, um, yeah, URL form encoded. JSON equals JSON encoded string. And they send an array of JSON through. And um, when, I when I wrote this talk back in April, I'm a, I'm a sham. I've been doing this talk too long. 
Um, when I wrote this talk, uh, uh, Zen Coder were the only people I could find that were still doing this, and uh, I tweeted about it, and they apologized and changed it, uh, <laughs> which is <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> it's like, thanks, guys. Don't do this. Don't do this at all. If you want to send JSON, how about you just actually send some JSON, right? Um, yeah, that's literally what the internet's for. Content type equals JSON, and then there's some JSON in the body. It's so easy. And it makes my syntax highlighter happy, which is the, the best part of that slide. Um, the reason that PHP developers do send post data is because they are lazy and it's easy. Um, PHP, good old Rasmus, made it nice and easy to do that. Um, the proper way of getting that content is a little bit tricky. So it, it looks quite long. But again, it's not that hard. Like right there, you've got a super global array with access to a certain key. If you capture this line of code in an array, then you've got the exact same thing. You can just access foo. Um, and PHP input is nice and easy to read. And in PHP 5.6, you can hit this as many times as you want and keep on getting the same content, whereas before, like, you hit it once and it vanishes, which is kind of shit. Um, most frameworks, <laughs> sorry, I'm a Laravel user. You can kill me later. Um, but uh, in most of these, like, you can just access foo straight up out of the string. So if you send a body and then foo's up top, you just do input JSON foo. So like, if you look at the number of characters and you want to actually tell me the difference, like, it's basically nothing. Um, it's, it's super easy to access content from, uh, from JSON if you use an awesome framework. <sighs> All right, shut up. You can access it unstatically. It's a facade. That Paul Jones at the back, Jesus. Um, so error messages are really important. Sorry, again, that's a private joke for like three people. Um, <laughs> error messages are a thing, um, and you should make them awesome instead of Windows. Um, and the, the most important part is that if you return a 200, then God damn it, things better be okay. Otherwise, this guy's going to rip your face off. Um, <laughs> do not, do not return a 200 if things aren't okay. Um, the reason that a lot of people do that, I think, is that they, uh, in their heads they have a big difference between um, like an error, like the server has fallen over, or like some guy in Ireland pulled a cable out that happened. Um, like they have this big difference in their head between like genuine errors and unexpected things and like validation messages and like validations aren't errors right they're like oh no it's okay we know what you're trying to do but it didn't quite work right and you get a validation return with like some validation array of errors and you return a 200 because things aren't broken they're just it didn't save 200 means like everything you expected to do worked out okay so you uh here's a bunch of data we saved that we did whatever um if, yeah, if you return a validation error and uh, it didn't save, and I think it saved, that could have been a like one million dollar transaction into your finance API. I think I made it. You think I didn't? You don't get a million dollars now. This is not okay. Don't return a two hundred if it's not okay. Um, on the other end of that spectrum is uh, don't ever write client side code. So if you're talking to an API over there, don't write code that says. Uh, if it's 200, it's fine. If it's not a 200, it's broken! Ah! Because people do this a lot, and it's really stupid. Um, there's a lot of responses that are okay that aren't at 200. Um, so anything that starts with a 200, uh, anything that starts with a 2 is it worked with varying levels of immediacy. Uh, 300 is it redirected. Uh, which again is fine. Um, YouTube use redirects as like, uh, oh no, we, we got your video and it's over here. So you get a 300, and that means uh, 301, I think, and it means uh, that you should check the header for uh, the the location header, and then save that, and that's the URL to your brand new video, right? So 300 is also fine. 400 means that the client, the user, you guys screwed up. 500 means the server, the internet broke somehow. I screwed up or something. Um, so 400 and 500 have a big distinction. Uh, this is a whole list of uh, client codes that I use for the company that doesn't exist anymore. Um, so who cares? I don't know. Read them. <laughs> um, oh, with the tequila in there, that really adds a kick. Um, <laughs> I'm atrocious. So uh, the way the way that it works is like. 
the point of this slide is an example of you don't have to use every single HTTP status code that the internet provides because there are loads of them. Um, and people act, you can always spot like that nerdy, nerdy developer that's building his first API because he has to implement, or she has to implement every single status code they possibly can. Um, and I just use these, which covers the basics like, 200, got it, fine, 201, created something, great, 202, accepted, we're working on that in the background, it will be published later. Uh, 400, pff, 401, get out, Four, <laughs> you're not a user, you're not logged in. 403 is, uh, you're logged in, but you can get out of this endpoint because it's ain't for you. 404 is, I have no idea what you're talking about. 405 is, Laravel did something weird. 410 <laughs> is, um, uh, yeah, we deleted that. It's 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 worth like remembering data in the background. So like when you delete something, maybe do a soft delete, or or even just like a, a Redis list of like these are recently deleted IDs. So you can check the recently deleted list of IDs and then say, oh no, we had that, but it's gone because that's much more handy than going like this never existed. Um, uh, 500 is <laughs> I'm bad at coding. Um, 503 means like. I don't know, man. Come back when I'm not on the toilet. I don't know, but it. <laughs> these are like enough. This this describes enough of an API, and I don't have to go mental about trying to use every single one. Because the reason you can't use all of them is that the HTTP status codes are full of bullshit. Um, this one, for example, you literally can't use all of them, so don't try. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I believe that was a, a happy birthday joke or something from the RFC group. But uh, yeah, I'm a teapot. Ain't no use to anyone. <sighs> Another really boring slide. Um, so <laughs> errors are like the most important thing. Um, errors, if you do them badly, are really useless. Uh, this is one from YouTube, which is, I'm sorry if any of you work for YouTube, but genuinely the worst API I've ever set eyes on. Um, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Um, what they do is insane. So they're like, okay, what's up? We got an error. There may or may not be multiple errors. Here's an array of multiple errors. Now, let me explain the error to you, son. Domain, some sort of parameter problem. Okay, cool. Maybe you can explain that further. Reason, missing required parameter. That makes more sense. That's relevant to the first thing. Message, no filter selected. Oh, I better put a filter selection in there. Location type, parameter. Don't know what you're talking about. Location, string. Cool, nice, thanks. Um, then they throw in a HTTP code, even though I know what the HTTP code is because I can look at the internet. Um, and then it once again says, oh, you ain't got a filter selected. And I'm like, well, you said that already. Thanks for being verbose. Um, so I'm, I'm looking there thinking, all right, I need to put some sort of filter parameter in there. But what does it really mean? What does it really mean? It means I haven't put that. That's what I'm missing. So this little message that says missing required parameter, no filter selected, means I've got to put and mine equals true. What? <laughs> it's so dumb. It's the worst API in the world. Um, so what you want to do is you want to put like a really explicit message in there that's like, hey guy, or, or woman, shit. Um, you want to put, uh, put a message in there that has like a type um, and a code that, exact, that is an exact explanation of that. Um, but you also want to put in a perfectly human readable message that makes complete sense. What you don't want to do is do what Facebook did when I wrote this talk back in April that they've since fixed, and I don't assume that it was me, um, was that you want to put a human readable message, um, uh, but you also want to put a code in because uh, there are so many examples in the Facebook API where you can get a, a auth exception, there's some problem with you logging in somehow, and you don't know specifically what that problem is. So I've written code before that literally passes this string and then does an STR POS to try and work out what might be the problem. And it, it's the difference between, you should try logging in again, your password's wrong, uh, you've literally blocked this application, or some other stuff. And it's, you have to STR POS to work out what was going on, and that's the worst. So bad. Um, so what Facebook has started doing since I started writing this talk, and I had to update it, thanks Facebook, is uh, they started putting in a little code here and it will tell you exactly what the problem is. Because if you, if you get an OAuth exception and you get a message like this, like it needs to be a page, you trying again won't help because what you're doing is broken. So if I get a 210, I can be like, whoa, 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 you signed in as a user, it has to be a page. How about we, we do that now? Um, that's really helpful. 
Uh, what's even more helpful is maybe just bang a URL in there. So if you've got if you've got a specific code and someone gets this API response, how about you throw a URL in there and then I can be like, oh, I know exactly what that error means. Thank you very much. So providing more information never hurt anyone. Uh, I guess a humble brag about being vaguely involved with the PHP League. Um, if you are trying to secure your API, then you should definitely use OAuth because it's awesome. Um, OAuth 1 is terrible, so just don't. Um, and OAuth 2 is, is really good. But one of the biggest complaints people have about OAuth 2 is that it's really hard to implement. And it's actually not if you use existing code. Like you think about anything, you think about handling payments, you think about anything under the sun, making a website. Like it's pretty hard unless you implement some code. That's why you guys use Cake. That's why you implement the Stripe SDK. It's it's why everyone does everything via code. So anyone that says that um, the OAuth two is hard just isn't using. There we go. Isn't using the uh, the right SDK. So maybe just use this one. It's really good. Um, it lets you do really cool, awesome, crazy, weird things. Like uh, you, with OAuth 2, you can, you can log in via username and password. You can log in via user flow redirect. You can log in via whatever you want. Um, and this is a really cool one. Uh, this, basically, uh, let me remember a minute. I've had a couple ciders. This, this lets you log in um, with client ID and client secret basically mean that I am the capture iPhone application. I am the iPhone application. This is me. And that proves that it, it's me. Um, and what it does is it says, I would like to log in to your OAuth server, please, mister, with social. Uh, that's the social grant type. And that describes what data it's going to give me. And I can work with it how I want. Network is a random extra parameter that I've created that says we're going to log try logging in via Facebook. And then access token is, this is my Facebook app, uh, Facebook access token. If it was Twitter, then it would be, there's also secret, but I hate, I hate Twitter. Um, and what that does is literally it will, pardon me, it will um, either log you in as a Facebook user. It will go off to the, uh, imagine this is a request made by the, the Facebook, sorry, made by the company I don't work for that never existed and I've never heard for made by their, their iPhone application, it will make a request to our servers and it will say, right, this Facebook user is trying to log in or sign up or something. They're trying to get in. Sorry, is someone having a more interesting conversation than I am? Okay. I'll... Yeah. <laughs> Just saying someone needs to shut their mouth more often. That would be great. Um, <laughs> you can chat outside or later. Um, Basically, this is uh, the capture iPhone application that says I'm trying to get in via Facebook. So what it will do is it will make, a, a, make an, a request to the Facebook endpoint, work out the Facebook user ID, work out if that Facebook user ID is in our database. If it's in our database, it will uh, log them in and give back a fresh capture user token. If it's not in our database, it will say, okay, I'm going to grab as much information from Facebook as I can, make a brand new user for them, and then give back an access token. So all you have to do is make a request that looks like that and that access token isn't valid. Please don't try and log in. I deleted the server yesterday. Um, it will make a request like that and then you're in. And that's what you have to worry about. Um, this, I guess, slide still exists because it's a humble brag that I was in South Africa once ever. Um, but you should use SSL because it's really not that expensive and it's quite easy. Um, and just, just use SSL. Regardless of which OAuth you choose, you should definitely just always use SSL. Apart from the fact that sometimes it's broken. Um, when I first gave this talk, I was on stage and I was like, no, you should always use SSL. It's amazing. And someone said, what about Heartbleed? And I went, what's Heartbleed? And they went, SSL's broken for the entire internet. And I was like, what? And, and then <laughs> they were like, you need, you need to update your service. And I went, I'm going to finish this talk really fast. And then I went and fixed my service. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It happened on the day and the hour that I was giving my talk. Um, so SSL is normally awesome. But the lucky fact is that if the entire SSL situation breaks, then it's probably just going to be a problem for every, the whole internet. And people are going to be busy hacking banks, not you. So just please use SSL. Um, Facebook doesn't do refresh tokens, the bunch of assholes that they are. Um, YouTube kind of do refresh tokens. Um, if you, if you uh, authenticate with them the first time that you've given them access, I see a nod there. That's a knowing nod. That's the nod of a man that's been screwed over by YouTube right there. 
Oh, that makes me so angry. It's, oh, I, haven't got, I haven't got enough time to be angry about that. Um, yeah, YouTube, screw you over. They give you the access token. Google give you the access token first time. So if someone like uh, disconnects from your website and you don't disconnect it from YouTube from there, then the next time they try signing in, you don't get a refresh token. So the next time they sign in, you get an access token. You're like, sweet, we're all good here. And then an hour later, you can't access their stuff anymore. So tcha, refresh tokens are hard, man. But watch out for, watch out for YouTube. Um, real fast, presentation layer. Uh, <laughs> What you want to do is you want to hide the uh, you want to hide the inner workings of your app from the outside users. Um, and Wizard of Oz, yay, cool. Um, people do this a lot. They return literally all of their data, and they don't even think vaguely about how they are going to actually show that. They just straight up expose their database, which is the worst thing you can do. Um, the reason for that is that well, there's a couple problems. Um, you return data from PHP, and PHP is a Bit of an ass with the fact that um, it returns everything as a string. Thanks. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't like uh, uh, inspect the database, and you get things like true. True in a database, and especially in MySQL, comes out as a one in a string. Thanks. Um, uh, empty data. That's that should be a null, or maybe that shouldn't be there, but it's an empty string. Thanks. Um, I've got a float. That's a string too. Great. Okay. Um, and that really screws people over. That screws over iPhone developers. That screws over everyone that is not an idiot. And if I look at your API and I see numbers in a string, I know f straight up you haven't seen my talk or bought my book. That's, that's all I know. I know that you're, a, you're an amateur API developer and it's embarrassing for you and you should feel bad. YouTube do a really weird mix of things. Again, I keep on harking on YouTube because it's the worst API in the world. Um, they, they do things like sometimes, sometimes a number is a number. Sometimes it's a string. Thanks, YouTube. Bunch of dicks. So I made something called um, Fractal. A little API, a little URL at the bottom there. Stop carrying this around like an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> I was challenged. I apologize. Um, I made something called Fractal whilst I was working for Capture. Um, so the company going completely bankrupt uh, and being a shambles, I guess, is kind of rectified by the fact that I made some code. But um, you basically pass in, here is a model instance from Laravel, which I assume is vaguely similar to you, otherwise you should improve it. But you have this model, um, and then you basically turn that model into a, a generic array, and then you can do things like, um, uh, yeah, so this, this created that. There's two awesome things that happen on this line. There's um, uh, we changed uh, we changed from using Fuel PHP, which I helped it create, which was terrible, um, to using Laravel, um, and and it went from uh, the ORM using created to created app, and we changed that. It was real tricky because uh, our iPhone application was expecting created because the original user didn't use Fractal because it didn't exist then, and it and then it we started using created app. Um, so we had we used Fractal to be a kind of middle layer to help go through changes without breaking the iPhone app. Um, so anything on the right you can change, anything on the left has to stay the same. And then the next version, we changed it to create that. Also, something else Laravel did, which I am not particularly friendly with, uh, with Taylor for, is that he changed created at, it used to be a string, and then he changed it into a carbon object. So in my API, uh, when, when, uh, when JSON in code hits an object, it runs a two string, and then all of my dates change from a string to being an array. So thanks, Taylor, you just literally broke my iPhone app. Um, I should have had more unit tests. Sorry, Grumpy. But yeah, that, that, that fractal stuff is really handy. It's really handy if you have an API or you're doing AJAX output of any sort. Please, please, please look at fractal. Um, you can embed data in complicated ways. I haven't got time for that. Paginating is really hard. I ain't got time for that. Um, if, you are, if you are paginating stuff and you do allow people to provide a limit, then maybe you, you set the limit to be a reasonable number. Because if you're trying to paginate stuff, it means that you don't want people hitting your entire um, data set, which could be millions. And if you don't provide a limit, then people can just crash your website. Like Anon, uh, Anon will screw you up if you don't have that in place. So if they trade on more than 100, maybe just say, bro, you get 100. So you get automate your testing, otherwise it might as well not exist. Uh, don't fight between PHP unit or BHAP because they're both awesome. Um, you, should, you should unit test your code at a very low level and also um, unit test uh, and also integrate test. Um, 
You can do that with stuff like this. Um, I, I wrote some stuff in my book. You should buy it. It's great. Uh, I wrote some stuff uh, that helps you uh, Gherkin. Gherkin is the syntax and is the system behind the syntax. You can literally just say, when I try and get moments one, I should get a 200 response because I know that I've... I know that data exists, and I, could, I should be able to jump into the data property, and then all these things should exist, right? And that, that helps me test that created exists, and it hasn't been changed to create it at magically because someone was bad at their code. Um, so uh, Behat is amazing for APIs. Um, you can also check in, I don't know why there's a random backslash there. I've, I've had that slide up for like a year, and it's not, I've not seen that before. That's weird. Um, you should be able to check, instead of just success, you should be able to check every single uh, like guard clause. Like any, any screw up you have should be tested as well. So with a lot of systems, if you try, if you try uh, putting in a note, it's going to look in the database and grab a no uh, and, and then say, oh, get me the note thing, and then work on that bit of code like it exists, like it's an object, and then you're going to try and access properties. And if you've got a note in there, then it's going to be a 500, and it might expose some crazy data. So um, I am over time. Ah! Uh, testing other stuff is cool. Postman's cool. Uh, no, API Blueprint's cool. You should use that. I've got new virus definitions updated. My Wi-Fi works. Uh, Postman's great. Use that. It's great. Uh, versioning is really hard. Don't do it that way. Don't do it that way. Maybe do it that way. <laughs> Maybe do it that way as well. Facebook, when I wrote it, Facebook were doing a really good way of, a, of versioning stuff, and then they changed it, and I hate it. So maybe don't do it that way. Uh, Batman slaps people regularly. Um, <laughs> yeah, with versioning, every way you do it is technically wrong. So don't get scared. When you read through the docs, someone's like, that sucks. That sucks. That sucks. They all suck. Like, literally, they all suck. Um, they're either like aggressively bad or complicated to use. And lots of variations in the middle. But just do it however you do it, and then it will be fine. Uh, you should probably buy my book because I can't afford to get home otherwise. Um, and that is the end of my talk. Oh, oh so what's up is uh, there is a, a code which I think is $14 if you buy my book. Otherwise, it's uh, £700. Um, no. Um, <laughs> use Madrid 2014. Use that. I'll put them slides up. And then that gives you a really cheap version of my book. So thank you very much, everybody. I don't know if you have time for questions, so maybe just talk to me when I've sobered up. But James, do we have time for like one question? Can we do one? One question. Okay, we have time for one question. Yes. I feel like I don't understand the question and I should talk to you later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do we have time for a question that I, uh, another one? I'm sorry. No, awesome. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Um.